All right, in this lesson, we're going to talk about ecology and biomes. You'll notice from this first picture, there are one, two, three, four, five, six biomes in the world. These are the areas in which organisms can live. The temperate forest, the desert, grasslands, tundra, tropical rainforests, and the taiga. You could probably think of many of these areas found in the United States in the upper northeast. When fall comes, you can see all the beautiful colors on the trees. That's more of a temperate forest. The desert would be out near Arizona, Nevada. Grasslands right in the middle of the United States. We don't have a lot of tundra, but it'd be getting close to the uh, outermost parts of Alaska, getting near the poles. Uh, the rainforests. We don't have really as much of that, um, but we have some areas that get a whole lot. Maybe Florida would be the closest area to our tropical rainforest that we would have in the United States. And then the taiga would be more like Colorado. These are the biomes found in the world. You may want to take a second and pause and write all of them down and, and basic areas where they can be found. All right, now that we have all six biomes, let's talk a little bit about them. What do they refer to? Well, first, the world has a biosphere. And here's a few definitions you may need to know. The biosphere is the area in which life can take place on our planet. A biome is the area where certain abiotic and biotic factors can live. For example, Make sure you know these terms. Biotic means living, abiotic, not living. Um, and so the biomes, we already saw them from the temperate forest to the taiga, but the biomes are going to be within the biosphere. And then within a biome, you can have a community, groups of living things in an area and how they're related to one another. So you can tell from this picture here, this would look very similar to a place in Florida, maybe somewhere where I'd like to go fishing a little bit. You have water and you have the grasses that come up to the water, so you have all kinds of amphibians. You would have fish. You would have animals that would come up to the water to drink. That community and how they survive in that area and are very important. And we're always interested in making sure that we protect these areas so the animals can actually live. Now, when we start talking about biomes and how animals relate to one another, this is called ecology, the study of the relationship among living things. More specifically, <clears throat> we talk about the symbiosis, which is the relationship between two living things. And you'll notice there's three kinds of symbiosis. Make sure you get all three definitions and know that this is a very popular t question on the tax test and it is easily confused. So I'm going to show you each of them in an example so that you can write them down. Go ahead and get the definitions now. And then I'm going to show you a definition, or excuse me, an example for each. The first type of symbiosis is called mutualism. Mutualism is where they're, both individuals are helped. Here's an example. Sharks are cleaned by little fish known as a remora. The shark never eats them since they clean off bacteria from the shark. Since both species are helped, this is called mutualism. So the shark and this other fish live together and they're both helped in the relationship that they have. Mutually, they are benefited. So that's an easy way to remember mutualism. There are lots of examples of mutualism in the world. This is just one example to help you so make sure you write this example down so you know the difference. Now, mutualism was the first type of symbiosis. The second one was called commensalism. In commensalism, one is helped and there is no effect on the other. Here's an example. Orchids, a type of flower, live high in treetops in the branches of very large trees. They don't harm the tree, but they are helped by being raised up into the sunshine and receiving water. 
So the orchid itself lives real high in the trees. The trees hold it up where it can get sunlight and water when it rains, but it doesn't hurt the tree at all by having the orchid there. This is called commensalism. One is benefited and there's no effect to the other one. The third, is, third example of symbiosis is parasitism. And this is a classic example of a parasite. In a parasite, one thing lives off another. Parasites harm or kill the host. A good example is a tapeworm. It intercepts all of the, the host's food, causing the host to eventually starve to death. A tapeworm is an example of a parasite. It lives inside of humans. Now, it is not something typical for you and I to get, but if we went to certain parts of the world, if we are not careful with what we eat and drink, we can actually get the eggs of a tapeworm, and they'll actually grow inside your intestines. And what it actually does is as you eat food, it steals the nu nutrients of the food from you, and so you would slowly starve to death while these grow inside of you. Now, there are other parasites in the world. Uh, by definition, something that lives off of something else, it's what a baby is. A baby is a parasite. Now, it's, it's not one that's going to starve us to death, but it has to have a host. Okay? So one is benefited and it harms the other. That's why a mom has to be careful with what she eats because the baby actually steals nutrients from her steals calcium to produce the bones that the baby needs, so moms are given extra calcium. Iron is also stolen from the mom's body to make red blood cells, as well as all kinds of other nutrients. And so a parasite lives off of something else. These are the symbiotic relationships that we talk about in ecology. All three of them are very different from one another, so make sure you look at them because they love to ask questions about ecology and symbiosis.